Hello and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, and joining me here in the Murrieta Studios is Dr. David Burns. Hi, David. Hi, Fabrice. Dr. David Burns has been a pioneer in the development of cognitive therapy, and he is the creator of the new team therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 20 languages. He is an emeritus adjunct clinical professor of psychiatry at the Stanford University School of Medicine. We have another uh, Ask David uh, question here from uh, one of our listeners. And uh, here's what uh, he wrote. Uh, He said, uh, I really liked your podcast uh, when you explained how an identity crisis in a young girl was due to having real life problems that she was avoiding. I have suffered from obsessive compulsive symptoms on and off, and I'm wondering, can sexual fantasies that I've had at certain points in my life that have produced feelings of shame and guilt result in having intrusive thoughts? I don't know whether or not this would be considered medical advice, but I found your books helpful. However, I've never come across any of these cases. Thank you. Well, that's a, a really fun fun question because a lot of people uh, struggle with having uh, exciting sexual fantasies that they, they that our upbringing or our religion or society is judged to be in, incorrect, mm-hmm. and and so you can be struggling in, in shame for for years, uh, thinking that that there's something uh, horrible or shameful or t- terribly wrong with you and this intelligent listener is is, is right so, sometimes these are just a symptom of anxiety that that can occur when when you're avoiding some something in your life that that other podcast was really on the hidden emotion model which is uh, one of the very powerful models for understanding and and treating anxiety that that some of us are very nice and when something comes up a feeling that we're not supposed to have, we're angry at some at somebody, or, or or there's something that we want that we think we're not supposed to want. We we shuffle it under the rug, and it can emerge as any type of anxiety, a phobia, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, generalized anxiety, pa- panic attacks, almost anything. And I I just happen to have a, a, a vignette, a story that maps exactly onto what this. Uh, this listener is is mm-hmm. asking. So I was really mm-hmm. intrigued when I when I read that that question that he sent as a as an email. But um, <clears throat> I, I I I get emails all the time from people who've read one of my books, like like Feeling Good, and yeah. uh, they often have very very kind uh, very kind things to say. And I got an email from a young man. In Argentina, let's say, just to disguise it a little bit, and uh, we'll call him Pedro. And he had when he, he said that when he was a teenager, he had a horrible obsessive compulsive disorder and depression, and had been going for treatment. His parents were bringing him for you know pills and psychotherapy, and, and no one had been able to help him. And then my book, Feeling Good, was published in South America, translated into Spanish. Yeah. And somebody gave him a copy of that book, and he said he started reading it, and miraculously, almost overnight, he completely recovered from uh, depression and, and obsessive-compulsive disorder. Wow. And he was so grateful and so excited, he, he said that he made a promise to himself that when he got older, he would uh, get a PhD in education, and then mm. he would uh, educate all the people in Argentina about cognitive uh, therapy, okay. oh, which, that's great. which I had r- written about in and feeling good. So uh, this all went as planned, and he he finished high school, he finished college, then he got into a PhD program in education, and he decided to specialize in cognitive therapy, and he was then he had to read all of these books by cognitive uh, therapists, and, yeah. and as you know, February's one of the very famous cognitive therapists was Albert Ellis, he called it rational emotive yeah, therapy, I know, but it's, right, it's yeah. similar to cognitive therapy. It's a forerunner, really. 
And uh, but Albert Ellis was was a great pioneer and a brilliant guy and a, a, a fellow of great integrity. But he was a, a wild guy too. Yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> and he, when he gave workshops, every sentence contained the F word, and yeah. people would complain bitterly about that. And uh, he had a bit bit of a bit of a reputation. Uh, but one of the, his his things is is he he like Freud felt that religion was one of the causes of human uh, neurosis and and he was very adamant he was a you know an atheist and very very much against religion he would always speak in disparaging terms about religion well pedro was reading an Al albert ellis uh, textbook on rational emotive therapy or cognitive therapy and there was a sentence something to the effect like who the who the h is jesus christ anyway and the hmm. implication is that that there are no saints or, you know, human beings with supernatural qualities. That that it's a con, and that that Jesus was just a you know a con man like Moses and all of the other people throughout history who have claimed to have you know special secret knowledge of God or or whatever. Yeah. And so when Pedro read this sentence, he was just shocked and stunned because he was a good young devout Catholic yeah. lad. And he became extremely upset, and, and he said within seconds he relapsed into full-blown depression and obsessive-compulsive disorder. And one of the symptoms that started to plague him that relates to this fellow's question about shameful sexual fantasies is he started having these intrusive fantasies of Jesus having sex with the Virgin Mary oh. in all, <laughs> all the positions of the Kama Sutra. Wow. And he was picturing these things in graphic detail, and telling himself, I, "I've got to control these these fantasies. I'm I'm, I'm going to burn in hell." Uh, and and of course, and of course, every anxious person does that. They try to avoid the anxiety, or control the anxiety, or control the negative thoughts, control these frightening and yeah, intrusive thoughts. Pretty and natural. The, yeah, and the more you try to control them, the the worse they become. And so he was asking me if I had any any tips for him on, on you know what he could do to to try to treat this 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 severe relapse. Now, I use, as you know, Fabrice, at least forty techniques in the treatment of anxiety. So I'm only going to talk about one one or two of those techniques yeah. right now. But one technique that can be helpful in the treatment of anxiety is called, called exposure. And there's different forms sure. of exposure. Classical exposure, like if you have the fear of heights, you get up on a ladder and, right. and stay there until the fear uh, disappears. disappears yeah. and, and then we've got interpersonal exposure techniques for, for shy people, like uh, talking to strangers in public or yeah. shame attacking exercises or whatever. And then there's cognitive exposure where you can con confront a fear in your mind's eye. And so it occurred to me that what what he would have to do if he wanted to recover is use cognitive exposure techniques. And in particular, what he would have to do would be to intentionally fantasize Jesus having sex with the Virgin Mary right. and to flood himself. Exactly what he doesn't want to do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and to do that until the fantasy loses all, all of its appeal. Well... I wrote back and, and told him that although I can't treat somebody through the internet, that if, if he were my patient, that this would be a mandatory re requirement. I had other techniques that would also help him, but yeah. this is one he would would be not not negotiable. Yeah. And would he be willing to do it? And then he wrote back saying that, that he was a Catholic and that he couldn't possibly use this cognitive flooding because it would be uh, a moral sin and he would That's burn in hell. Yeah, right. uh, now, this illustrates something really imp important about the treatment of anxiety is that virtually every anxious patient will uh, stubbornly resist exposure techniques. Everyone has their own excuse why they shouldn't have to, to confront their fears. Yeah. And if the therapist gives into that, the, uh, the, therapy, the therapy is doomed. Uh, and a lot of therapists do give in, they, so they don't use exposure, and then the, the patient never never really recovers. So I told, I wrote back to him, I said, Pedro, you know, I'm, I'm not a Catholic and, and I don't know the theology on this, but I do know a fellow who's a Catholic monk. And I'll ask him for a consultation. And meanwhile, you, Pedro, uh, go to your 
religious experts and, and ask, you know, ask them what they, what they think. And so I told this, this fellow, and he said, who was a Catholic monk, and he said, well, he didn't know for sure, but he would get together with some of the top theologians in his city. <laughs> and they had a half a day conference on this, whether it's morally acceptable for a young Catholic boy to intentionally <laughs> fantasize Jesus having sex with the Virgin Mary in all the positions of the Kama Sutra. And what, what, what was their official religious position? So they debated this. And then so he, he, he called me after the conference and said they had a unanimous decision that it was morally acceptable as long as the purpose was healing and rather than, than entertainment. Right. And so that, that's the first, first point. So I wrote back to him and, and I said, here's, here's the answer I got. And uh, again, if you were my patient, you, you, you would have to do this. And, and if for whatever reasons you have, you've decided you, you, you do not want to do that, I'd say that that's not a problem, but then I'm, I'm not willing to, to try to treat you. Right. And that's called the gentle ultimatum. So, and yeah. it's, it's part of team therapy and, and paradoxical agenda setting. So I thought that that, that was really interesting. And, and of course, if he, if he does do that, he'll, he'll soon discover that it becomes very boring to, to put these, these, these fantasies yeah, course, in, yeah. in, in your mind. But the second point about it was, was also, I thought, very interesting and relevant to this fellow's cool cool question and that was about the hidden emotion te te technique you, you see one of the causes of anxiety is, is we have a feeling that we think we're not supposed to have and so because we're nice and of course Pedro's this nice young man and so you sweep that feeling under the rug and, and suppress it and you can't remember what you're upset about and then it comes out as in his case intrusive OCD thoughts, obsessive compulsive disorder thoughts, right. or panic attack, or whatever. Can you, uh, Fabrice, think of some emotion that he might have been having at the at the moment he he relapsed, uh, an emotion that he that he was, uh, you know, push sweeping under the carpet? Well, one of the the classic emotions that gets pushed away is anger. Yeah, in my experience, uh, and so that would be one possibility. Yeah, but who would he be angry with? Well. Um, he could be angry with you know, with the church or with his parents. Good, good, good. Yes, you're you're close, but it's it's real obvious. What? Well, he could be angry with you. No, he's not angry. I'm his hero. Uh, or, or Albert Ellis. Albert Ellis. Yeah. Why would he be angry with Albert Ellis? Well, Albert Ellis uh, is like this authority figure that suddenly, uh, you know, um, puts shame on on something that he dearly believed. Yeah. The, but at the same time, he could not bring yeah. himself to be angry at Albert Ellis because he was this, you know, great promoter of uh, uh, cognitive therapy. Yeah, Burns likes Ellis. He's a very famous yeah. person. So who is little Pedro to be angry at Albert Ellis for saying who the, who the H is Jesus Christ anyway? Yeah. He sweeps it under the rug. Won't permit him to feel that, and then it comes out instantly as as, as obsessions. Yeah. And so, the another keystone in the treatment w would be for him to to bring that to conscious awareness. You just talk it over with him. I'm sure it would he would immediately own up to it. Uh -huh. And then, where the cure comes when you're using the hidden emotion uh, model would be then maybe he he'd want to write send an email to Albert Ellis and and in a very uh, uh, respectful way to 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 share those yeah. the, the, those feelings. So that would be another another way to get a handle a handle on that. So that's that's all she wrote. All right. Well, so uh, going back to this fellow's question, um, who was really talking about his own um, you know sexual fantasies. Um, well, it would be the same thing. I, again, I can't treat him yeah. for, through an email right. or through a question. But one one technique among others, I'm glad you brought this up, actually, would, would be uh, that, that if he's fighting against these so-called shameful sexual fantasies, maybe he could uh, uh, decide to, to flood himself with them, to intentionally make himself as anxious and and upset as possible, rather than to try to try and to sweep these out, out right. of his mind. And so go, would, go in the opposite direction that you would uh, instinctively yeah. go to. Yeah, yes. to stop trying to control them. And instead, bring them on and try, see if you can make yourself 100% anxious for 30 minutes or 60 minutes yeah. or, 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 or whatever. And then the other thing that he's sensing is, is maybe like Pedro, 
there's some issue in his life that he's not dealing with. Mm-hmm. And someone he's upset with, but it it isn't always anger. It could be something he, he wants, like maybe he, he wants a different job or he wants to, to major in some other subject in, in sure, school, yeah. but he's doing what he thinks he should do because yeah. daddy wants me right. to, to be doing this or yeah. or whatever. I mean, it, I'd have to know more about his, his life and, yeah. and what's been going on, but... Uh, but those would be two potentially very productive uh, well, treatment I, methods. I hope this is helpful to this fellow. It'd be interesting if you know, he could uh, send you some feedback, see how this worked for him. So just for the record, this is uh, um, episode 21. So if he wants to refer to this when he emails you. Yeah. And so, okay. So thank you. Great. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com where you will find the show notes for this podcast under the blog page and where you can leave your comments and questions. The website has an abundance of resources for therapists as well as non-therapists, including books, workshops, a list of online training groups around the world, and much more. Theme music is Gypsy Jazz in Paris, 1935, composed and performed by Brett Van Donzel. I am your host, Fabrice Nye, And I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.